Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So here I just want to rant a bit about an issue I see um, and something that I've recently um, uh, really like discovered and like delve into, which is the fact that a lot of people despise um, symmetrical openings in the beginning, um, especially when they're uh, in the you know intermediate or lower levels, where they hear the sentiment that oh e4 e5 you know it's very it's very drawish. Um, it leads to symmetrical pawn structure uh, as well as d4 d5. So I think that this it really comes from a misconception that um, getting a symmetrical pawn structure in the first move of the game leads to like a dead equal position. And it's true, and it's clear that it's not. Um, it's not the case because we've seen um, through top tournaments that uh, if white wants to try to fight for an advantage, typically against this they go for the Rui Lopez and. Um, yeah, and, and it, uh, White seems to have some fighting, fighting chances if they're able to understand the position better. So I think that this misconception comes from, their, uh, comes from players' upbringing, where they hear a lot of people say that, oh, if you want to win the game, you go for the Sicilian. You go for, you know, maybe a, 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 an unsymmetrical opening, like the Karakhan, maybe. Um, and just like a different, a wide variety of different openings, but typically... The sentiment is that the Sicilian is the best way for Black to try to fight for a win. But if you don't under this, understand the positions as well as your opponent, then you might as well be playing something you're more familiar with or more comfortable with. And the things that a lot of people are um, convinced into playing the Sicilian so early on, such that they're not able to explore all of the rich territory in e4, e5. And I believe that it, it was Karpov that said that if you want to be a good player or you want to be an improving player, you have to play the Rui Lopez either from the white or black side to better understand the uh, these kind of dynamics. And I do believe that this is actually the case. And as black, I think also a lot of people think that if they enter e4, e5 openings, they're going to be in a in a very dead drawn position, or they're going to be slightly worse um, from already from the beginning. And so I think that people really uh, stay away from e4, e5 uh, when they're starting out. Um, just because of the sentiment that has been instilled into their minds. But, you know, uh, I think that the thing is that um, even though it's symmetrical in the first move of the game, it quickly can become uh, unsymmetrical. For example, in let's look at one of the variations in the, um, in the Spanish uh, after a6, bishop a4, just the main line, knight of 6, castles, uh, bishop e7, rook e1, b5, bishop b3, castles, uh, let's say c3, and then d5, or let's just say, you know, white plays another uh, anti martial h3, d6, c3. And then we see that white's plan is just to advance with d4, while black cannot do the same. And so the dynamics shift, like it won't be a simple case of, um, you know, one side copying the other and this being a, a dead drawn position. It's clear that there's so much life left in the game and a player with a better understanding of the configuration of pieces, uh, piece dynamics, um, you know, playing with the center and playing with less space can outplay their opponents, you know. Meanwhile, I think that this is not the case um, in some symmetrical openings, such as the exchange French, which is notorious for being very drawish. Um, although I think still, as black, you shouldn't be fighting for draw. You should just play the position based on what the position demands. So for example, there's this one variation, which is essentially the main line of the exchange French, which goes something like this. Bishop g5, bishop g4, knight bd2, knight bd7, c3, c6. And both sides, you know, play the exact same moves. And this is easily a draw. Like, it's not even a, it's not even, you know, in contention um, of, you know, white is being better or slightly better or whatever. Because it's just, um, both black and white are doing the same exact things. So, yeah, yeah, this position, I believe, is just like, uh, you know, has essentially no life to it. At least that's what that's in my opinion. And I think a lot of players will agree. Um, and so this misconception that e4 e5 in itself is a draw just because they're symmetrical in the in the beginning, I think it's a big misconception. And this is the same with uh, d4 d5. I think that in some of the lines, like let's say in the queen's gambit decline, knight c3. Um, okay, let's start with knight f6. Perhaps you know white can argue that this exchange variation, um, which has been uh, popularized by Kasparov in the past and has shown to um, you know come with aggressive intent is kind of what drive people away from playing the Queen's Gambit decline also but it's not that simple like 
you know, uh, white, okay, white typically has both ideas of, okay, let's say pawn to c6, uh, pawn to e3, uh, bishop e7, and either bringing the knights out to f3, and going for this typical minority attack, okay, let's say maybe better move orders bishop d3 to prevent bishop f5, uh, knight bd7, let's say just knight f3, uh, castles, queen c2, and then later going for rook, rook b1, b4, b5, and okay, maybe in this position, you know, um, a lot of players are afraid to go into such um, uh, positions where d4, d5 occurs and it creates, you know, a relatively um, symmetrical, but not exactly because this is more of a Carlsbad structure. They think that maybe they're on the, um, you know, worst, light, worst side of this um, by a lot. So, like, they think that they're just going to get a very passive position and not have any counterplay, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Like, um, black has very typical ideas, strategic ideas of trying to exchange these bishops, um, uh, maybe this bishop uh, for this bishop, um, or even if if a white gives up the bishop uh, for the knight on f6, then later there is very good potential for black to fight um, a white's kingside, uh, well, white's kingside castles and try to generate an attack. So it's not that simple, you know, uh, as like one side is much better, uh, one side is slightly, uh, or, or one side is slightly worse, and you're gonna have no conflict. It just depends on understanding the position well and studying the position well enough so that you don't um, get into a worse position, let's say. So yeah, that's just a, a bit of a short rant uh, that I have uh, where I think it's it does a lot of people very well to learn the classical e4, e5 or d4, d5 openings um, because I think a lot of people actually play better in those kind of positions where it's not as crazy um, already from the beginning because, you know, as we know, in the Sicilian, things can get out of hand very quickly where white can typically, you know, have the initiative and black uh, can equalize but needs to know a lot of stuff. And so understanding e4, e5 better and d4, d5 better, I think will suit a lot of players, um, yeah, really well. And also it's a, it's a nice, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to have like a, um, some safe opening to, um, to rely on throughout your chess career. Like, you know, let's just say you don't have a lot of time to prepare. You can always, uh, you know, go back to e4, e5 or d4, d5. Um, and as long as you understand the positions well enough, no new theoretical breakthrough, you know, will suddenly break your opening. So, yeah, uh, unlike, you know, the Sicilian where a new novelty or um, something like that uh, could show up and cause you some problems. Um, so, yeah, I think that's it for me. Um, yeah, hopefully this is, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, insightful in some way, or, um, you know, you can always try to disagree with me and just debate me in the comments below. So yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.